All right, Mr. Gadget, back again. Let's skip the solar triangle at the bottom of um, page eight. Let's let's skip that, okay? We go on to uh, page nine, the water cycle. And the water cycle, you probably know from uh, middle school, elementary school, probably don't need to go through that, but copy down just these definitions on this page. Pause it and do that now, please. Okay, so some things that are maybe new to you. Transpiration is when plants give off water vapor into the air. You don't think about uh, the leaves of plants give off water vapor into the air. It's called transpiration. So the total way that water vapor gets into the air is evaporation and transpiration. Sometimes it's called evapotranspiration. That word is right here. Uh, runoff, so the rest of the stuff I think that you know generally, but run, when rain hits the ground, you really do two things. It's either going to soak into the ground or it's going to stay on the surface and flow downhill. So it's staying on the surface, not going into the ground. The amount that goes downhill is called runoff, water flowing on the surface. And infiltration is that water soaking into the ground. And we're going to look at why uh, things that affect whether, whether it runs off or infiltration in the soil itself. Uh, zone of aeration, uh, so zone of saturation is area underground that is filled with water. Uh, we'll explain that in a little bit. Zone of aeration is where there's no water in the spaces between, like let's say the individual sand grains that make up soil is empty with air. So it's dry down there. Uh, and water table is the top of the zone of saturation. Let's look at some of these diagrams now. Okay, please pause this, copy this now. Okay, this is the water cycle. We're gonna add some things to it. First of all, transpiration. Water vapor given off by trees called transpiration. When that water vapor, which is basically invisible in the air, when it goes in as a con condensing, it forms clouds. That is a vapor to liquid, and clouds are liquid water. Actually, water droplets. People don't th think of that, but uh, condensation is what happens in the clouds. When it falls, it is, I didn't label it because it's uh, precipitation. You know, it could be rain, usually, snow, sleet, etc. And in this case, it's doing two things. So the water hits the ground here, if it's raining really hard, it runs down the surface into the ocean here. That's called runoff. Some of it will also go into the ground. Usually it goes into the ground fairly slowly. So if it's raining hard, a lot of will, will run off. The infiltration will go into the ground here. It's like that's that soaking in or seeping in. Oh, I have evaporation over here as well. Um, and then I have, I think on the next page, what, how do I have this? That's there. On the top of page number 10, uh, this diagram is very similar, but a little bit different. Oh, this is what we're, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna, uh, please pause it and label this. Okay. So this, in the ground, uh, underground water is stored in the empty spaces between, I'm gonna call it, let's say it's sand grains, okay? Empty space between the sand, water goes in there. Um, and if you have a well, you make sure you drill your well into this. It's, it's called the zone of saturation. The ground is saturated. The, that area is called an aquifer where there's water down there. This area here is dry. You don't dig a, dig a, dig a well down here. You're not going to pump any water out of it because the soil is dry. That's the zone of aeration. The top of this layer of the uh, top of the zone of saturation, the top of this aquifer is called the water table. And the water table will actually kind of shift a bit. When we get a lot of rain, the water table rises a little bit. If we have a period of drought, the water table goes down. If you pump more water than's being added in through infiltration, the water table will go down. Um, okay. All right. Add these to it now, please. Pause it if you need to. Okay, so this is similar again. So you have two diagrams. This is runoff, infiltration. We'll call this in the aquifer. This water here is called groundwater. If you have a well, that's where your water comes from. You to dig down uh, a well below the water table. I had root trouble labeling here. This is the water table. And if your water table is 28 feet below the surface, you have to dig, dig a well. Definitely 
deeper than 28 feet, maybe 35 feet to account for any raising and lowering. And that's where your water comes from. It's pretty amazing that pretty much everywhere on Earth, if you dig down, there is water in the ground that is stored that is safe and drinkable for humans. Pretty amazing fact because it's something that we so desperately need as humans. Um, it's pretty amazing. I think a lot of people tend to think that the water comes from these big underground caves, these open areas, and that's where the water is. And it's not. It's just stored in between the pore spaces of sand or even in rock. Rock stores waters too in the cracks. And a lot of your wells probably are actually down into rock and the you pump the water out of that rock for everything you use in your house, which is pretty cool. I'm going to stop this episode now.